Oh, there's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. Oh, there's a man with a gun over there. Telling me I've got to beware. Now, I'm not going to bore you with my singing because I'm not a very good singer, but that song means a lot to me. Buffalo Springfield, it's a very old song. I'm sure you've heard it, but it's very, very current. When you think about the words of that song, it makes me stop and think about all the protests that are going on in the world right now and, and how people are so divided and this, this country is so divided and, and the political games that are going on right now. We're, we're, in reality, we need to all come together and, and fight the fight as one country. And one big problem that we have is the state of our forest. I mean, that's very personal to me, and, and you know that, and that's what this whole video is all about. Because in my area, I pay close attention to what's happening. I do occasional flyovers with my drone, and I look at the number of dead and dying trees, and I compare them. You know, I can, I can do the same footage and look at it from year to year, and the number of trees that are no longer there, have, that have, have fallen down as a result of sudden oak death or phytophthora disease or insect infestation, uh, is very alarming. Now you look at this picture and you say, oh, it all looks pretty green to me. Well, I see lots of discoloration. I see lots of decline. I see, I see dead tan oaks all through the forest there. I see the fir trees dying. I see the madrone trees in trouble with the, the Botryosferia disease. There's so much that's going on that you really have to stop and slow down and pay attention. Now, now what can we do about it? Well, that's a huge issue. What can we do about it? How can we slow down the problems in this forest that we love so much? Well, we can start by paying attention to what's happening throughout the entire world and realizing that if we continue to consume the forest, that we're going to be losing vast parts of, of the ecosystem that is so, so critical to us. You know, we can only log so much. You know, we can only burn so much of the forest for replanting with, you know, the, the palm oil plantations. You know, we've got to pay attention to how we see the balance of this world. And I don't know, I, maybe I'm getting up on a soapbox box here and, and, and talking about it, but I think that we as, an, as a nation have got the power to stop and slow down and pay attention to what we have, but also what we're losing and how quickly it's going away. I mean, I'm showing you all these beautiful pictures of the forest here, and it's easy to say, well, that doesn't look so bad. Well, you've got to go out and hike in the forest and really, really look at what is happening. And I'm very, very concerned about the fires. And a lot of the fire fuel is associated with trees that are dying and falling on the ground and creating these massive amounts of, of litter that is impossible to clean up. You know, when you live in the forest, you develop a different kind of an appreciation for it. Well, at least I do. Some folks that live in the forest see the forest as their way of making a living, and they see trees as lumber or a way of making money off of the wood, firewood. Some people will harvest things from the forest, like on the East Coast, people will take sugar from maple trees, the, the sap, the maple syrup. Some people see a forest as a, a logging adventure and the, the thrill of cutting down big trees is, you know, it becomes their, their life. It's their livelihood and I, I appreciate it and I understand it. But I think there's gotta be a balance to 
understanding the forest for what it really is. The forest is a vast ecosystem of lots of different types of trees and plants and animals and insects and fungus and all the things that it takes to make the forest thrive. And it's all connected. Everything is interconnected. Right now I feel that the forest is in trouble. The forest is sick. There are so many different diseases and problems with insects and Phytophthora morum and Botryosphaeria and so many trees are succumbing to these problems like like this madrone tree over here that's died and this tan oak here that you know succumbed to the Phytophthora disease and if you look over in the distance there I've got another huge tan oak just enormous you can see how it's starting to turn yellow it's it's going to be dying I've got this massive big tree that is over my house that I've really grown to love. Even though it's close to my house, it's, it's just a magnificent specimen. This is a canyon live oak, and they're highly susceptible to the same disease. And I, I dread the thought of this tree succumbing to the disease. I've got another huge, huge canyon live oak up here. And if you look at it, it towers over my house. A lot of people will look at it and say, what happens if it falls down? Well, I live in the forest. I choose to take some of the risks. You know, I do pay attention. I look at that tree all the time for areas of decay and weakness. And someday it may fall down. I, I hope not. And look at the light green up over there. That's a, a deciduous oak. That's a, a black oak that's just leafed out and it's coming into its change. So, Look at the coloration changes of the foliage. There's a black oak up there, the bright green. And down low, there's a, there's a black oak that was dying and I cut it way, way back and it suckered out. And, you know, even as it, it's a safe tree now, it's the base of that tree is completely and totally rotted. But, uh, you know, it, it becomes part of the forest too. And look at the coloration changes. You can see little areas of bright green. You know, you know that's the brand new foliage that's coming out. And then off in the distance there, we've got the madrones. Oh, the madrones are my favorite. And when I see so many of the madrones sick and dying, uh, it, it really gives me pause and makes me wonder, is that the next big problem that we're going to have in the forest? I've got a, a view out here that I really appreciate. And one by one, the tan oaks are dying, which <laughs> ironically is improving my view but it's also an indicator of how sick the forest is. I do drone flights over the forest periodically and from the sky looking straight down I can do a count. I want to back up a little bit. I've lived up here on this property for 26 years and when I first moved up here there weren't any dead tan oaks. I've probably got a thousand tan oaks or had a thousand tan oaks on my property. And now there are at least 150 dead and dying tan oaks. And over the last five years, we've lost, oh, probably 200 other tan oaks. I know there's lots and lots of little ones that are coming up in the woods that are replacing the tan oaks that have died, but even the little ones are succumbing to the Phytophthora disease. So I believe that that's a, a tree species that's on its way out. Uh, it's trying really hard to survive and, and it's a vital tree of importance for wildlife. So many animals, including the deer, eat the abundance of acorns that this particular tree produces. I've got a nice little grove of madrones down over here. I also like to, if you look way up high over there is where I have that tree platform. I like to go up there from time to time and, and it just gives me a place to take pause and look at the forest as a whole. I think more people need to go out into the woods and, and absorb the 
the whole picture, absorb the the essence of, of what it is that the forest is all about. You know, people that go for a hike and, you know, they, they just talk or listen to their headphones or get on their bicycles and they, they just ride the trails and go through the forest. They don't stop and slow down and, and see the woods for what they really are. You know, they, they see it as a, a place to go exercise. There's another tan oak right here that, so far, it looks pretty good. But that one right there, really close to it, it just died, it turned brown. So I'm gonna watch this tree and see how long it's gonna last. I have high hopes that some of the trees, the tan oak trees, have got a built-in resistance or a tolerance to the Phytophthora disease, and, and ultimately those will be the, the trees that can reseed. I know that in nature there are a lot of trees that will develop ways of surviving and you know the, it's these anomalies that become the you know the the survival of the fittest that's kind of interesting i don't know if you can see it but down there there's a, a dead tan oak right next to a fully green tan oak so i've been watching that one and there's also a number of bay trees on the property you can see that there's a bay tree just kind of popping up over there that's a, a natural tree in our area and they're getting a reputation as being carriers of the Phytophthora remorum, the, the sudden oak death. So a lot of people are eradicating all of their bay trees because they believe that that's going to minimize the potential for their other oak trees getting infected. Now that, that was really big in the news a few years ago and I don't know how true it is, but it seems like a, a pretty radical thing to do. I need to see more evidence that eliminating bay trees helps protect other oak trees. Because out in that area where I have the biggest problem of the, the tan oaks, there are literally five or six hundred tan oaks just beyond this grove of madrone trees. Those trees are in terrible, terrible, terrible shape, but there aren't any bay trees out there. At the top of the property, way up high, there are a few bay trees. But are the bay trees the problem, or is this disease perpetuating itself within the species itself? So the tan oaks are, <laughs> they are succumbing to the Phytophthora remorum, and the tan oaks that, you know, they, the spores that go out into the forest from the tan oaks are affecting other tan oaks. So, uh, you know, saying that the bay trees are harboring the disease. I know the bay trees will, will hold the disease, but it doesn't kill them. And for a while they were saying the same thing about redwood trees, that redwood trees are also susceptible to harboring the, the Phytophthora remorum, but it doesn't kill them. So there's so much that we don't know. There's, you know, much of what we're talking about in the forest and the trees is not financed sufficiently to have really, really good answers. So a lot of the theories that we have are just that, they're just theories. But all we can do is pay attention. So I implore you, go out and take a, a walk in the woods. Go out and see the woods for what they are, but slow down. I mean, look closely, especially right now in the springtime, as everything is evolving, everything is coming back into, into life. The, the blossoms, the even the insects is fascinating. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support of everybody who tunes into my channel, especially the people that comment frequently. And uh, please help me spread the word and uh, let's get more people who want to be educated in the value of trees. Yeah. <laughs> We're so high. <laughs> Hundred feet off the ground, but hundreds and hundreds of feet off the canyon floor.